Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. It's the second of two Q&A episodes for the month of April covering the previous month, March 2017. Your questions and comments that have come in through uh, YouTube, through email, through you know the cloud, the internet, whatever. Um, for LED lighting, the first one will cover uh, home animation generally, so this one is LED lighting. With a couple of, uh, it's probably gonna be a short one, just a couple of questions came in. And uh, the best way to get a hold of me, uh, the YouTube comment system is kind of not the greatest for creators to actually view and kind of sift through the comments. Uh, for people commenting, it's fine. But anyways, uh, YouTube, please fix it or create a way to download them or it's a mess. Anyways, uh, questions at smarterhomelife.com. That address is probably up there in the corner or something like that. That is the best way to get a hold of me. I generally get back to those questions, uh, get, back, get back to you within a couple days, and then the best, most interesting, helpful ones do wind up on these episodes. Uh, before we jump to the questions, I just wanna do our quick house ad uh, for Patreon. This is for the people who support the show and help make it a financial they're supporting the show. Let's try that again. Supporting the show financially and they're helping it be a success both now and in the future and also previously. So anyway, some people have been contributing. I want to thank some of the longtime people uh, like Jim J, who has been contributing for two years. That's two of the three years that Smarter Home Life has even existed. And, and also along with other uh, longtime supporters like Richard B, John S, and Sean thank you. These people have decided to help out the show. They're going to be, um, they're the originators. They are the, you know, the, the forerunners of everyone who is to come in the next couple weeks and months as the big next campaign gets started, uh, uh, which covers a, a few goals. The main goals being making this a full-time operation and also getting rid of all of the ads across YouTube and all of the web ads as well on smarterhomelife.com and the Smarter Home Life YouTube channel. We'll probably keep the Amazon product recommendations around because they do make sense uh, if you're looking to buy some of the things that I review and talk about. But the rest of the ads are going to go away based on when we hit some goals. They make the show independent. It just solves a number of issues and uh, no one wants to watch the ads anyways in general. So those are some cool um, goals that I'll spell out in an upcoming video, literally in the next day or so. I've got some really cool uh, video stuff coming out regarding the third anniversary and the next you know, months and year uh, to come of Smarter Home Life. So thank, thank you to everyone who's been contributing. Lots of exciting news coming up very shortly. And let's jump into the questions for March 2017 all about LED lighting and I've got this don't you hate it when there's like these tiny little flies or gnats and you just can't nail them and you have no idea how they keep surviving because you've like eliminated all the things that they could be like eating just want to have like a zapper gun or something anyways uh, this is kind of a follow-up um, from Chris we had been having a conversation and I think I included uh, his question or a comment on an earlier Q&A I may have figured it out uh, and he's referring to hue lights, but I'll, I'll talk about this in general about smart lights. In your lighting Q&A, you warned against having hue lights on a dimmer. One of my lights was and it, one of my lights was and it gets powered off a lot. I wonder if that is messing up the network. I moved the bulb to another location and nothing has gone offline since. That's good. If this is still the case after a few days, I'll be pretty convinced that I fixed the issue and it was because uh, as the issue was pretty persistent. And this is true. This goes for all smart bulbs. Now, uh, let me show you just an, an example of one. This is the LifeX Plus. This launched just a few months ago. It's the third generation bulb that LifeX put out. It also has infrared LEDs, which help out with uh, night vision for say security and surveillance cameras that may be in your home so that in other areas of a room that aren't lit up by the IR illuminator on say your Nest camera, Zmodo, zillions of brands of surveillance cameras that are out there, this will help it. Now I'm kind of talking about this. Uh, full disclosure, LifeX did provide this along with a few other products for testing so I have to say that otherwise like people get mad. So yes, they did provide it to us for testing and review purposes. But this is a smart bulb. That means all of the electronics for the control circuitry, the dimming, everything is in this. So please, please, please do not put 
Hue lights, Sylvania Lightify lights, LifeX lights, any any of those Bluetooth bulbs, even the, uh, the Cube smart bulb that I reviewed recently, don't put those on a dimmer ever. Just don't do it. If you have a fixture that has a physical dimmer on it already and you like the fixture and you want to put the light in it, um, I'm not going to demo this for you, obviously, because I don't want to give out electrical advice. Find a way to do it safely. Disable the dimmer, reroute the power around the dimmer, or just cut the dimmer out of the entire electrical uh, equation in that fixture, and then you can use these successfully. But these are independent. They are controllable directly through the app or through third-party services or controllers, but don't put them on, di on a dimmer. That is the opposite of something like this. This is one of these um, Cree uh, candelabra bulbs. It's just a regular LED bulb. It may, you know, do some effects with its uh, color temperature changing and kind of looking nice and warm, uh, you know, have a nice fiery glow when it's dimmed down, but it does it on its own and it's fine. It's, a regu it's generally thought of as a regular LED bulb. This guy and other bulbs like it that change colors and all kinds of fun stuff, don't do it. Regular LED bulbs, fine for dimmers, as long as, I, as, long as it actually says, suitable for dimmers or okay for use with dimmers or dimmable on the package smart bulbs don't put them on dimmers that's that's like the easiest thing now of course some people usually by accident not necessarily on purpose some people on accident have run these things on dimmers and found that they do work but generally not consistently uh the dimming circuitry or the 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 strange line voltage and the weird, uh, usually what dimmers do, they tend to chop up the electric, um, the, uh, the electric current and different dimmers, um, whether it's leading edge or trailing edge and different triacs will do this differently, but it messes up the current that the, the smart bulbs are expecting to have and all kinds of weird things can happen. Um, if you put it on a dimmer for five seconds, yeah, you're probably going to be okay. If it's on there for a life, it's going to cause damage at some point. The bulb's going to stop operating, whatever. Do I have to say this enough? Just don't, just don't put them on dimmers. Now, there is a bulb that I'm going to be reviewing coming up hopefully next month or in June by a company called Sengled. They claim to have made the first smart bulb that's actually compatible with dimmers. Whether that's really true or not, we'll find out, and you'll see it here. So I'm actually pretty curious about that, and then that throws the whole thing about don't use smart bulbs on nimmers, kind of throws that whole thing out the window. So we'll see. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> issue was fixed once he moved it to another location, obviously off of a dimmer. That's great. Again, sometimes you might run into challenges with smart bulbs, like I was talking about, like, like I was talking about on the Q and A episode for home automation. You might run into challenges with um, performance and capabilities in terms of just getting, you know, access to it wirelessly if it's in a remote location of your house and it can't communicate with the hub. Uh, if it's, you know, if it's Wi-Fi based, like the LifeX bulbs are, if your Wi-Fi router is really far away. You might consider getting one of those um, multi, uh, you know, um, zone uh, Wi-Fi systems like Google Wi-Fi, Eero, or something like that. Um, but, anyways, again, on a dimmer, bad idea. You're probably going to run into problems anyway. So, can I say that more? Can I? All right, we'll move on. And uh, thanks so much, Chris, for uh, for the continuing conversation. And glad to hear that it has uh, worked out for you. So the second and final question comes from Nalin, or is it Nalin? Not sure, it's N-A-L-I-N. So thank you for writing in. Um, Nalin says, I enjoyed watching your 2015 LED light bulb buying guide on YouTube. It's a very informative and educational video. Thanks very much uh, for that. I enjoy making generally all the videos, but I love these videos, these Q and A's the most because I can just kind of have a kind of a conversation with the audience. Um, do you have the latest version of that uh, where a similar comparison show? Not yet. This summer, there will be some additional comparison uh, videos coming out in addition to some articles on the website, smarterhomelife.com. So look for those. Uh, those will cover uh, lighting, also some home automation uh, gear, probably the hubs and whatnot um, over the summer. I'm planning to remodel a couple of bathrooms and wondered what, we, what your recommendation would be to use such bulbs, LED, in recessed fixtures above the ceilings. I also have 75 watt halogen light bulbs in recessed fixtures. What would you suggest in replacing halogens with LED lights? Looking at 3 inch gimbal spotlights. Um, thank you, Nalin. So, 
this is it's not that difficult to find uh, replacements for you know for these um, basically they're par bulbs this is um, he mentioned gimbal spotlights which a lot of times are those little eyeballs that you can kind of maneuver around there they are on a little gimbal that you can just you know usually the angle isn't that um, extreme it's usually like 20 degrees or so that you can kind of go in any direction to angle the light and many times you see them and they're very very small uh, they could be using something like a par 20 this is um, this size I don't happen to have a par 30 in my hand but it's generally about about 50% larger than this. It's usually about three and a half inches in diameter. And these are focused beam. This is an LED. This is by TCP, which I still feel is one of the best makers of these focused beam LED. Um, I don't want to call them bulbs. Let's just call them lamps, okay? LED lamps. Um, this is a 50 watt replacement, a PAR 20. A PAR 30 would be, um, again, like a 75 watt replacement um, for a halogen bulb would generally be something um, around probably 10 to 11 watts. This, I believe, is about mm, 8 or 9 watts. Maybe this 75 would probably be about 11 or 12 watts of, of power usage compared to that 75 watt. But again, it would be a PAR 30 LED. And uh, they're, these, they have uh, the manufacturers that make these, including TCP, although they were a little bit ahead of the game, they've really nailed the, um, the dimming, the brightness, the, the beauty of the light, and also the, uh, what I call the lensing, which is the, the lens that basically kind of amplifies the LED, because usually there's a single LED, a large LED inside here, and it's getting, um, through kind of a, a special lensing system, it's getting put out um, into a certain degree degree of um, light in terms of it's building that nice cone of light. This is generally going to be, I think these are a 35 or a 30 degree or 40 degree um, uh, general purpose um, flood bulbs. But Nalin did mention an area of the home that I want to pay close attention to, which is the bathroom. And of course, as we know in the bathroom, if it has a shower or something, you know, like just a regular tub or something like that, you've got, of course, moisture. Now, some LED lamps and bulbs will say really exactly right on them, and this is actually printed on here, that it is suitable for damp locations. Now, there's a difference between damp and something being like in a, uh, in a shower location right above um, your shower enclosure. Because that can introduce, you know, obviously, not that your shower is going to be aimed at the ceiling, but splashing water and just anything could hit the fixture. And obviously, electricity and water really don't mix and shouldn't be combined unless it's some kind of a science experiment. And generally, electrical codes around the country will say that you have to specify certain types of fixtures and certain types of lamps for different locations, outdoors, indoors, damp locations. And a shower would be more specifically categorized as a wet location, just because of the danger of water possibly hitting the ceiling. That's why many times you see uh, recessed fixtures being used and they've got a big, some sort of um, diffuser or a kind of a, more of like a, I don't want to say a Fresnel, but it's got like a uh, lens on it that's going to diffuse that light. And it's usually, sometimes they're pretty thick. They actually reduce the amount of light coming through. But with LEDs, you can kind of overspec the lamp and kind of get a little more brightness out of those. I've done that in, uh, in my uh, small little bathroom and, and shower area here. <clears throat> but having a a gimbal type fixture, one of those eyeballs in a shower, it could look more beautiful because you'd have a nice focused beam instead of that general um, uh, defocused light uh, coming from a fixture that has one of those, you know, kind of big lenses on the, on the bottom of it. But it's more dangerous to have something like one of those eyeball fixtures or a gimbal because you've got more spaces that water could get into that fixture and cause problems and possibly cause a short and well, you just don't want to have electrical problems when you're taking a shower. The only other way, and I don't know if this is really legal or to code, if you're really dead set on using one of those types of fixtures, and having a nice focused beam uh, LED lamp in them is maybe somehow figuring out a way to put some sort of barrier like a plastic lens that's clear or a glass lens. Again, glass, not really great in the shower either. Um, <clears throat> make sure it can't fall down uh, over it so that it protects it from water and accidental, accidental sprays, but 
still allows that light to come through. I've really never seen that done. Um, and in the LED world and, and soon with OLED taking over, we may see more of these options happening in terms of uh, fully sealed fixtures that can actually be used in uh, shower and more wet environments just because of the technology. We really haven't seen it happen uh, and I did some research for this person online through the big box stores and through Amazon which is what's generally available to consumers. Contractors may have uh, products that are a little more robust but you just you unfortunately don't tend to see these but i i would like this to be developed so that there would be more lighting options other than just generally diffused light in a shower but in, in a shower or over a, a bath type thing if it's high enough you know you could be using track lighting or something else that's farther away from it and kind of away from the water source there's just a number of options but again when you're doing anything remodeling wise and especially in a wet uh, damp area like a bathroom uh, and especially over a shower or a tub definitely consult your local electrical codes um, i can't speak for every single one that's around the country uh, but be safe and uh, so that you're not sorry later. So that's kind of the best way I can respond. Thank you for writing in. We had kind of a couple emails back and forth, so hopefully that uh, that solved his, uh, his or her challenge and they're on their way. I also encourage you, if you're doing um, these uh, remodels and if you've got questions, you know, once you've finished it, you know, send me your photos if you would like, uh, not uh, and, and if you want to give permission for them to be uh, used on a, a Q&A episode to kind of show off like what you've done, send them in. I'm really curious to see what you do. A lot of our um, viewers and people who write in have interesting projects and they talk about all the things that they're going to be doing. Uh, so um, send, in, send in your photos. I'd be curious to see what your project looks like uh, once you're all done. And if you, even if you also have some before photos, before and after would be kind of cool to see. Gives inspiration, not just it's interesting to me, but it's also giving inspiration, kind of allowing uh, viewers to kind of springboard off of different ideas that people have because people have so many different ideas when it, term, when it comes to home automation and lighting and remodels and whatnot. So definitely send those in to questions at smarterhomelife.com. And kind of a new interactive thing for this month, I did it on the Q&A episode for home automation, so I'm gonna do it on this LED lighting episode as well, is how do you use LED lighting? Are you all in? Have you completely converted? Are you using a mix of LED lighting and, and old fashioned incandescent, maybe CFL. I'm just kind of curious also just as to the state of what people are doing out there. It helps me be more knowledgeable. We can actually um, kind of cite it as a poll uh, from the audience. So I'm really curious. Send it in to questions at smarterhomelife.com with the subject line, how I use LED lighting. And that would be super. That is it for, it's kind of a shorter episode, um, a little bit with question wise. I think we're um, on the clock on the uh, TV opposite me. We're still about the same length, but no matter there. And um, again, questions at smarterhomelife.com is the best way to reach me. I do these Q and A's every single month. So um, please get me. And if you're interested in uh, having a little bit more of an interactive type of feedback with your questions, because sometimes emails just don't solve it. I do offer a relatively low cost, um, it's hourly service um, that I will I can interact with you and your project directly uh, right in real time via video chat, via FaceTime, Skype, Google Hangouts, whatever your favorite one is. I've done it for a few people and they've been really happy with the advice and being able to show off what they're actually talking about and, uh, and have me kind of help them through their challenges. And that's for lighting consult consultation, uh, for lighting design and advice, and also for all the home automation challenges that you can throw at me. And so otherwise, that is it for the episode. And we've got more uh, really cool videos coming out very soon, additional product reviews, obviously, but it is the third anniversary of Smarter Home Life and some really cool stuff coming out over the next couple of days, so watch for that. Otherwise, make your home just a little bit smarter every single day. It just takes a little bit of effort. I make changes to this place all the time and it improves the little bits of home automation that I change and you know everything kind of cascades and makes differences and it's just really fun. Home automation and LED lighting, it's just really fun. Anyways, that's it. That's the end of the episode. I'm Joe Deganzik. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>